Previously on Best Friend Forever. The team found themselves in a rather unusual pet shop, owned by a familiar voice. Welcome to Fox's Tavern and Bar. I'm Fox. Nope, not that one. You caught me. That's it. <laughs> they then caught up with Astrid and hastily found themselves on a date. We're going on a date with her and we didn't even, look, we didn't even know that. Is that, that what happened? Yes. Oh. After a brief icy meeting, <laughs> the pair wound up in a karaoke bar alongside an unexpected face. <gasps> Oh! Hi, welcome to a play date of Best Friend Forever. Um, I'm with my best friend forever, Steph. That's me. Oh, no, that was your cue to say something nice about me. Let's just get into the game. Did you uh, introduce yourself? Well, that, no, you were supposed to. This is Nick Boy. Gravy. Gravy. Hey, Astrid, over here. <laughs> Maribel is standing by one of the many seats in the bar, enthusiastically waving us over with gravy perched on her <laughs> back. <laughs> That's such a strange sentence. Because Gra gravy's tiny, right? Gravy yeah, fit in like a hand. Yeah, but on her back? Oh, in a backpack. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. It was yeah. just like... Just oh, on the shoulder. Why do all the women in this game have animals on their shoulders? <laughs> I got you both drinks already, on me. Oh. Does she th think that we set this up? Yeah, what? Uh, were you expecting us? <laughs> Caught. Of course. Astrid didn't tell you she was bringing you to karaoke last night? Uh, is this some kind of like polyamorous setup thing? <laughs> Again, I just love the fact that, I mean, I guess it is a dating game, so it's fine. But just this idea that like for us, it's like, you only talk to people that have sex with them, right? <laughs> like there's no, there's no chance these people just there's want to be friends. There's gotta be a sexy motive <laughs> yeah. going on. <laughs> I couldn't have you pulling out. It is a sexy motive. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Anyway, I hope you like gin and tonic because that's what I ordered. And it's also the cheapest thing on the menu. <laughs> Astrid, you know I only order top shelf stuff. Sure, but for both of us? Of course. Well, I have no idea how you afford this stuff. Never you worry your sweet little head about that. Are they flirting in front they of- They fucking are. And not only that, there's an implied like past relationship here in terms of like, you've bought drinks for her before. I don't like this. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> what? <laughs> I chipped in. Gah! Fox, true to nature, appears behind me with a short glass of grain alcohol. Wow. Clutched in one hand and a microphone in the other. Oh, you're already here. I got here first. You all hang out together? Welcome to Rainbow Base Karaoke Covenbo. Stop trying to make that name happen, Fox. Good. I think somebody woke up on the wrong side of the skating rink this morning. It's the triple axel. It's just, I can't land it. You're beating yourself up over perhaps the single hardest move in figure eight skating? I don't like the fact that they're all friends. Neither now, do, yeah. Because that, it's like, well, if we date one of them and it doesn't work out, they're all cut off. We can't just move to the next one. Yeah, but that's lesbians though, right? They just all date each other. I've known enough lesbians to know that's true and feel confident in saying that. Well, I'm glad you said it, because I was thinking it. <laughs> I'm just saying you shouldn't dwell. We're not here to mope, we're here to sing. Astrid turns her face with a warm smile. I hadn't noticed how tense her body had been up until now when she finally let her shoulders drop yeah, just a little. A little. Loosen up. Get her some of that grain Her delicate, in. slender shoulders. Mm. The owners know us pretty well by now, so we get discounts. I hope you warmed up your voice. I'm a terrible singer. Get ready for some oral pleasure. <laughs> I'll let you pick. Um, I'm a terrible singer. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm happy to watch. Do you like karaoke? <laughs> Not really. Mm. I feel like I always pick songs that no one likes. Mm. I have a big karaoke fear of that because it's like when, <laughs> I've, I think I've, I may have even spoken to this before. Like when my partner walks into the room and I'm listening to, the mu to music, I will like leap across the room and like knock the Google Home out of the power in in shame like I've been caught watching pornography. It's like, I'm so like, oh no, I don't want, music is really private for me in that way. And yeah. I'm like, no, 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 don't listen to what because I'm Because your to. taste in music is different to her taste in music and you don't want to like inflict it on her? Yeah, like you're the only person who I know in real life who I'm like, oh no, I'll put this song on and I'm, I'm okay with you wandering around. Yeah. But when Pete's here, 
Forget about it. Yeah, but that's because Pete's a musical elitist. He's such a musical curmudgeon. He's really judgy. He's such a musical curmudgeon. Like, we listen to stuff in the car, and when we listen to his music, he, like, gives me all these facts and history no. about Led Zeppelin and stuff, Ugh. which I find interesting, but if we listen to anything that I like, he just shits all over it. Yeah. I love that's it, sweetheart. That's not true. It's true. Hey. Will, put that in. It's true. Yeah, it's all true. Yes, Will, don't put it in. It's Will, true. Will, censor all the stuff that Pete's put, saying right now. Put it in. It's yeah. true. Participation is an optional. We don't judge, though. I might. God, she's crazy. I've got such great energy for her. We usually do a song or two each and then sing one together. You don't have to join in for that, though. <laughs> Only the solos. <laughs> hey, stop offering easy ways out. She needs to sing with us if she wants to be one of us. What does that mean? One of us, one of us. <laughs> All right, calm down, you two. Who's singing first? We started without you. Fox just wrapped up a beautiful cover of La Laura Del A's Youthful and Attractive. <laughs> <laughs> right, I get it, Lana Del Rey. <laughs> that's a terrible song for karaoke, Fox. It's too slow. Oh my God, that's me. I'm always choosing like Jewel and stuff and everyone's like, well, this is a real downer, Steph. Thanks a lot. I'm going yeah, to get some ramen. Totally. <laughs> Well, I for one think you should go next, Astrid. I need another drink before I whip out my cover of the Charcoal Procession. Procession. Black Parade. Black Parade? Oh my God! Karaoke's on, motherfuckers! <laughs> Come on, show Bo what you've got. I guess I've got a number in mind. No, of course you do, Astrid. Astrid accepts the microphone from Fox with a curtsy and makes towards the stage with a small skip in her step. She's oh, excited. she's happy now. She, she knew. She knew this would happen. After selecting her song, she takes center stage, back to the audience wow. with the lights outlining her silhouette in gold. Wow. She's really putting on a show. Massive curls up in a ball at my feet, clearly feeling done for the day. Mm -hmm. As the bass line starts, Astrid begins to tap her foot, her hips swinging ever so slightly with each movement. Astrid sings the first verse, only looking over her shoulder between lines, moving her hips with the rhythm. As the chorus comes in, the lights go up and she spins around, marching out into the aisles and singing to various patrons. When I was a young boy, That's always my fun. father took me into the city to see a marching band. I think they'd already done that song previously. I think she's doing a different one. She's not the world's best singer or anything, but certainly above the karaoke standard. That's all you need. Well, that's like, this is a kind of slightly judgy observation. <laughs> I mean, particularly for someone who's like, I, I refuse to do this. Totally. So... You and Astrid, huh? God damn it. Uh, I, I mean, we're just hanging out. But would you like to do more than just hang out? Why else would I be here? We'll see where things go. I'm not looking for anything serious. I think we'll see where things go. I think so as well. I think that's a good middle of the road response. Yeah. It leaves us open to switching to one of these two women if we really <laughs> need to. Or Anders. We can't forget Anders. We can't forget Anders. We must not forget Anders mm. because Anders is actually who we want to end up with. Mm. I don't really know right now, but I'm excited to see where things go. Mm hmm. Idiot. What a middling answer. Oh. What? I know, these two are like heaps keen to make something happen. Yeah, also we've only known this woman for we like a day. We just walked in the door. Come on. Give us a break. That's a deduction against your total score. Oh God, they're being like protective friends. All right, Bo, that's question one. Now tell us, <laughs> what's the wildest thing you've ever done? <laughs> I once lived in the woods for a whole week. Sometimes I'd leave my front door unlocked on purpose. You don't have a door. The other week I ate expired chicken. I guess the, the top one. Yeah, because they were pissed that we gave a middling answer last time. Yeah, and like leaving your front door unlocked on purpose just seems stupid. That's dumb. Uh, and the bottom one is just gross. That's reckless. <laughs> the top one is also just camping. <laughs> yeah. I once lived in the woods for an entire week. Oh. Oh, because she's outdoorsy. Yes. She's, she's into that as a response. She is. Which woods? Great question. Uh, just one of the reserves around New York City. <laughs> 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 yoink, not yoink. New Yoink City. <laughs> yoink. The big smoink. So you were camping? <laughs> I mean, this is very judging <laughs> yeah. from how you look right now. I hate them. To be honest, I'm not quite sure you're up to the same standard as Rainbow Bay's own nastiest girl. Are they saying she's nasty? Astrid? Yeah. So they're saying, like, she's freaky and you're just... 
She's into kinky stuff. And she's a little milk toast for Astrid's mm. liking. Seriously, Maribel. Oh, shit. We'd all been so caught up in the interrogation that none of us realised that Astrid had since ended her song and returned to stand at the end of the table. From now on, she will not be referred to as Astrid. She will be referred to as Summer Bay's nastiest girl. <laughs> Would it kill you to mind your own business for once in your life? Ooh, actually hurt her feelings. Without any further discussion, Astrid storms off and Laika quickly leaps to follow. I like how we've clearly hurt our friend's feelings and look at the face Maribel's making. She's yeah, like, totally. I don't care. <laughs> should I go after her? No, but she should. Oh! M me? Astra doesn't really react well in the heat of the moment. She'll need time before she's ready to see Maribel again. I guess I better go quickly if I want to catch up. Mm -hmm. I hope she hasn't gone too far. <laughs> I'm not much of a runner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Helpfully, Astrid is nowhere to be seen. Good. I guess my other option is to go back and face the terrible two again, or take a guess and keep on walking. If only she'd left a trail of breadcrumbs or something, a trail of white. The dog. <gasps> That's ingenious. Half a moment later, I find breadcrumbs. Yeah! A few tufts of white fur on the sidewalk point towards the esplanade down the way. Good call back. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Laika. Once more onto the beach. I get it. My friend. I get it. Whoever was writing this was just like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I wrote that line. Astrid is sprinting back and forth across what little dark sand hasn't been swept under the tide. Laika follows closely behind her. After a surprising number of laps, Astrid finally calls it quits and flops backward down onto the sand only a few meters away. Mm -hmm. Blowing off steam. It helps me think. What are you thinking about? Now? Honestly, not a lot. How about 10 minutes ago? Mm. Sometimes people need coaxing to be sure they're safe to talk about something. This doesn't feel like one of those times. <laughs> <laughs> Astrid seems calm, like it really doesn't matter. She splays out on the sands like a curling up beside her, a shelter from the night's chill. Stars are bright tonight. Steph, I'm liking Astrid more and more. I glance up, she's right. The wind has swept most of the day's clouds away with the business district largely shut down for the night. More stars than I've ever seen in New York adorned the sky, winking down at us. That one there, she points up to the sky. <laughs> Honestly, I can't really tell where she's pointing. <laughs> Just nod and play along. Yeah. That's Jupiter. That's not a star at all. <laughs> no, but it's still important. Jupiter symbolizes strength of expansion. I forgot she was into astrology. Yeah. Are you a Sagittarius? <clears throat> nope, my son is Capricorn. What are you? I'm an Aries. Oh, interesting. <laughs> is it? Right, well, during the Sagittarius season, Jupiter gives its, its energy. It's all about open-mindedness, adventure, travel. Supposedly, that means we all get that too, even if you're not a Sagittarius. Hey, that's cool. I'm just saying it's a pretty cool planet. What's your sign? I'm Scorpio Sun. Oh, cool. Gemini Moon, Virgo Rising. I won't get too into it, but my Jupiter is in Sagittarius. Mm, she just made this up at this point. Oh, I didn't even know there was more than one sign. I like to read about this kind of stuff. It's really interesting stuff, even if it goes mostly right over my head. Okay, that's like a nice, honest answer. Yeah, that's like saying it's cool you're into it. I don't really know much about it. It's cool you're into it. Let's just keep it like that. <laughs> I'm glad you don't think it's weird. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, not going I never said that. <laughs> Maribel makes fun of me for being too airy-fairy astrology. Maribel's mean. Astrid shuffles back in the sand, moving to sit beside me. She smells like some kind of floral soap, despite breaking a sweat. Ooh. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice Massive and Laika starting to play again. Good, you guys occupy each other. We're about to make a move. I really wanted tonight to be fun. This probably seems all really petty. She just really got to me this time. I get it. There were people back home who pushed my buttons all the time too. Do you miss them? <laughs> not really. Uh, not enough to distract me from being here. Well, that's a nice way to put it. Thanks for coming after me. It's nice to have someone to talk to. This is the moment. She leans her head over onto my shoulder and loose strands of hair fall forward over my top. I can see one bead of moisture just dangling on the end of one lock. What's your move here? I would maybe, like, just go for some skin contact. Mm -hmm. Like, push my leg against her leg. Yeah, right, that's nice. That's or something nice. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's early days. I'd either do the head tip, or I would make eye contact, and then just pick up the lock of hair and suck the bead of moisture off the end. To show her that I'm not worried about germs. Well, I'm always, always happy to talk. We stay like that for long enough for me to lose 
any estimation. After particularly brisk wind rolls in, throwing both sea chill and sand at us, we finally break for the night. Astrid calls an awooba to pick her and Laika up, and I think about doing the same. Uh, that is by far the longest tech company name I've ever seen. Awooba! It need, like, if this was, if that was a real <laughs> tech company, you would take out both O's and the E, and probably the A. It would just be wooba. Yeah. This wasn't really what I had planned, but it was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe sometime we could... Before I could finish that thought, uh, a suspiciously clean hybrid pulls up beside us, ready to take Astrid home. Suspiciously clean. In the spur of the moment, Astrid pulls herself up onto her toes and plants one quick soft kiss on my lips. It's momentary, but it's sweet. Yes. Like... Literally sweet. I taste her strawberry lip gloss on my lips as the Awooba leaves, massive and I standing in the cold. All right. It happened. Time to head home. Good night, Astrid. Oh, wait, were you going for creepy or seductive? <laughs> yeah, that's bad that you can't tell. <laughs> Are you as tired as I am, massive? All right, so we've closed the loop with her. Successful first day. Yeah. The question I reckon, is... I reckon if we asked her out again, she'd definitely say yes. For sure. Do we want to go to Anders or do we want to go confront Maribel? No, I want to go to Anders. I want him to cook for me. I feel like I've enjoyed chasing Astrid, but we've done a lot of chasing. And I feel like I'm ready to be pampered. Yep. I'm ready to be cooked for. Love it. I'm ready to have Anders' hands uh, caress my face again. Mm -hmm. um, you ready to just smell sandalwood? Yes. Yep. Oh my God. Why is this whole thing set in a karaoke bar? Why do we keep going back here? This is like Groundhog Day. Yeah, of course Massive is carrying. This is terrifying. What? Who drinks actual short black espresso? I do. Anders looks up at me as I pull out the stool beside him. I think it was just me. And I think it was just my voice. Yeah. <clears throat> you come here often? Uh, I'm still new here, but I don't really go anywhere often. <laughs> Ex Except for here. Yeah. I come here often. All the time. <laughs> what about you? I didn't think karaoke would be your jam. Ah, uh, they don't make braille karaoke, no, but I have a few favorites I know by heart, like Banjo V's Lizard on a Chair. Liv Banjo V's <coughs> Lizard it's on a Chair. Bon Jovi Living on a Prayer. But honestly, I prefer to come here when it's quiet. I mean, what do you think about karaoke? It's fine, but I don't really like to sing. <laughs> I'm sure you're more than capable of making some lovely sounds <laughs> oh my god i am blushing he is going to make us sing <laughs> he is gonna make us sing but it's kind of you to spare our ears some others could take notes woof who wronged anders maribel <laughs> still i think he complimented me i think is this because we failed so many dog encounters? It's like, level up your freaking dog because your dog is failing Because your dog is covered in shit again. <laughs> okay, so just randomly, our dog got so exhausted and filthy that she, she ruined our date? We were just, yeah, we were like, we have to leave and wash our dog. Uh, so now we need to go hunt down Anders somewhere else. Yeah, hopefully not the karaoke bar. No. South Shore Street, the other place we always go. Yes. All right, so next episode, we get to spend meaningful time with Anders. I think we need to leave the dog at home. Dog ruined it last time. Oh, no, but but it, our dog getting on with his dog is kind of crucial to the whole thing, I think. I would say more crucial than our dog getting on with any other dog is it needs to get on with the seeing eye dog. Yeah. Because he can't get rid of that dog. Yeah. I mean, seeing eye dog would have some good manners, so hopefully Massive will pick up some traits. Pick up some tips? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And hopefully we pick up some... Some of these. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what he would do. That's like, it, like he's all smooth and stuff, and then he's like, let me just like give you some of this stuff. <laughs> do you want some of this? Then join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash back pocket. Head to YouTube, Twitch, we're everywhere. Stop doing that. Nah, this is sexy. Is it? Yeah. <laughs>